That's good. And I think we are ready to pass to the Shanghai team whenever we are ready. I know that today we will start with a keynote from Professor Lo. So Professor Lo, thank you and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Maggie. So uh, today actually we're gonna have a, a, a couple of presentations. I will do a general introduction of uh, uh, what the uh, City Science Lab Shanghai are doing. And then, I mean, uh, we're going to have uh, seven uh, separate presentations. They will introduce the project uh, which are ongoing. And uh, uh, my talk will be uh, the Sustain, Sustain X uh, schema designed for complex social technical system. Uh, system. So that's uh, uh, the theme of uh, 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 our laboratory. And uh, the story I just started from 10 years ago. So in 2014, uh, during the Tongji Design Week, so a group of uh, uh, scholars in Shanghai, and uh, we made a, sorry, uh, we uh, made a manifesto, we call Design X Manifesto. And later we named as a kind of a Design X Complex Social Technical System Design. So uh, actually you can access uh, the whole manifesto from the, the following uh, the QR code on the, on, the, on the picture. So these are all the founders of uh, uh, Design X Manifesto, uh, myself and uh, Dan Norman, Ken Friedman, Peter Young, and Anna from uh, TU Delft and Patrick Whitney from RIT. And what is this design X? It's uh, all about complex social technical system design. So at that time, we think that the design as usual uh, need to be changed. So we are promote a new culture, which is an evidence-based design approach and uh, addressing better to the real world challenges. It's about uh, complexity, ambiguity, and uncertainty. It focuses on the uh, relationality and the system. And it's a uh, uh, we involve complex system of stakeholders and issues. And there is a, these things are, of course, I mean, important, but uh, I will say that it's not that new, but we propose a couple of uh, new features of design. I think that's uh, still relevant even nowadays. So uh, the new design is not only proposing solutions, but also involved in implementing solutions. And uh, uh, we propose that the, uh, the new design is to develop a solution through small and incre in, uh, incremental steps. And the uh, modularity allows for uh, measures without comp uh, compromising uh, so the, the whole and then making progress by uh, modeling through. So basically these are the key uh, messages presented by the Design X Manifesto 10 years ago. And after that, uh, I uh, uh, developed my keynote uh, of ACMKI uh, in uh, 2015 uh, to become an article. Uh, I published it in my own, uh, the journal published uh, um, uh, by Tongji and uh, Shiji. Uh, the theme for that article is designing uh, interaction to counter threats to human survival. And uh, actually it's an open access journal, so everybody can access uh, this article uh, from online. And in that particular article, and uh, I propose that uh, uh, the design and the data, the design and the data-driven hybrid community building as a kind of a, uh, epistemology and the methodology approach towards the design X challenges. So the uh, hybrid computing is uh, not only as a kind of action, but it's uh, it has the meaning of uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 methodological and uh, it, it it's it serves as a set of methodology and the tools in both design research and the practical uh, applications, and it also functions as a solution oriented living lab and an incubator for interdisciplinary outputs and the prototypes, and also it facilitates the co-creation of an ecosystem of a research community and the stakeholders, enhancing uh, collaborative efforts. So uh, when we framing uh, this uh, uh, task, and we can always uh, start from the very traditional uh, uh, two uh, traditions, uh, action and a system. And actually one actually came from Max Weber and one came from uh, Emil Dukan. And for me, I think that if we talk about the design, actually it's, uh, the, the, we start from the action. Action is an is a individual cre creativity. But uh, if we talk about innovation, innovation is uh, 
how to transfer the creativity to become a systemic impact. No matter you through uh, economy or you through administration or I mean you through uh, the industry. So the, the scale up of the creativity is innovation. It's innovation is always we're talking about the system level. And the second observation, it's uh, also uh, developed from uh, my article uh, I mentioned it before. So uh, human beings, they create an artificial system, I mean, to better uh, interact with the nature. But uh, in this system, and the human being create a cyber system, and eventually uh, they create the uh, interaction of the four orders, uh, the, four, uh, the, the, the four systems. And the cyber and the physical, they become a, 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 a key, one of the key interactions among these four systems. So when we talk about this community building, so it's not only from the physical level, but also, I mean, from the, fight, uh, the cyber level. Actually, data, they connected this technical system, and uh, thanks to the development of data science, it connected this technical system and the social system. So if we put it together, then we can see that, 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 that there's a two axes, I mean, defined by action, system, cyber, and the physical. And uh, uh, from the uh, left to the right is uh, the uh, creativity and the innovation. From the up and the down is the uh, technology and, uh, and the social innovation. So we will talk about design and the data-driven hybrid computing. And these two axes actually define the, 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 uh, a, a framework. And we can also see the four uh, congruence, I mean, based on these two axes. And action, you can see that from the uh, uh, bottom uh, left to the upper right, and it's action in physical space to use a system in within cyber world. In, the, uh, in Shanghai, actually, we developed this uh, nice 2035 project, which is a, a nice means the neighborhood of innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship towards uh, 2035. And uh, we did a lot of uh, 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 project, right? And it's from the uh, micro design intervention and uh, to all kinds of a prototype of a new possible uh, business models, new possible uh, 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 ways of living and the uh, uh, design of a ways of living and the ways of uh, producing and we're designing the quality of life within a five minutes neighborhood actually last time when in Cambridge, I presented this project uh, in the concept of a five minutes neighborhood. And also we adapted the city science approach uh, uh, to test the, how the data driven approach can uh, facilitate all kinds of uh, uh, social innovation. And uh, uh, step by step, we develop a, a small but a connected system surrounding the College of Design and Innovation at the Tongji University. And, uh, but if uh, uh, we put all of these activity, I mean, into this uh, uh, the framework, and we can see that the, the, obviously there's a four words. The first words is the human words uh, on the uh, 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 lower uh, left. And the second words is uh, on the upper left is a digital words. And the third words is a collaborative collaborative words, which is a uh, in 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 the area of a physical and a system. And the last words is a generative words. So we can see obviously actually we are dealing, uh, we are talking about design. We're talking about the community building uh, within the framework of these four words. And what are the objects? And we can see that from the uh, lower left is a place and experience. And then to the uh, 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 upper uh, left is a data and interaction. And then to the uh, 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 lower right is a living and a sustainability. And then to the upper right is a network and a dynamics. And uh, actually, there's a, there's a challenge. If you look at the uh, community building project, or I mean, if you talk about the uh, social, uh, the complex social technical uh, system project all over the world, we can put all of the project into, uh, 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 in this, uh, within this framework. But I mean, what will be the key challenges? And we, I feel that the key challenges is the connections. So there's a, obviously the challenge of a disconnections. 
So in, uh, including the connection of a human and a digital uh, professional and a daily life and academia and the, and the practitioners and the individual and the uh, masses and the et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so our, our folks, our proposals is uh, how to connect all of uh, uh, the, 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 how to enable or increase the connection of uh, the different words. And the uh, first is uh, how to connect the words of uh, human and the words of uh, digital. And uh, uh, from the methodological level, and we think that the action research, data-driven and design-driven action research will be the uh, main uh, methods. So we are taught, we are using the uh, multi uh, module and embodied AI and uh, uh, prototyping and the user experience and design activism. I mean, as a as a as a as a as a, as a key uh, methods. And then, I mean, how to connect the world of digital and the world of a generative, generative world. And we think that nowadays, the AI-aided approach or methods will be the, 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 the key opportunities. And including uh, now how to involve the AIGC and the IoT and how to involve the DAO and the blockchain. And these are the Will pro provide uh, uh, lots of uh, possibilities. And then how to connect the word of uh, the, the generative words and the collaborative words. And uh, we believe that the network analysis will be the key methodology, including the digital simulation, uh, spatial computing on the network side, and uh, design for sustainability and the city science on the, uh, uh, the, 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 the living world side. And then how to connect the uh, word of a human and the collective word. And we believe that the living lab approach will be the, uh, the, the, the key uh, methodology. So um, here we talk about the co-design cool and the social innovation, design for social innovation. And then how to connect the word of human and the, the generative word. And we think that the making, correction, right? And these are the, uh, the, 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 the among the, 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 the key uh, methods. And, uh, and how to connect the words of uh, the digital and, uh, and uh, the collaborative words and uh, uh, actually the uh, project we are doing in, uh, in the city science uh, lab, lab, city science approaches, uh, including the knowledge graphic, uh, human loop, and cross sourcing, and all of these things, and uh, they provide uh, the methodology uh, the contribution. And then, of course, I mean, uh, uh, these can generally framing our, our project and uh, uh, how we develop our research. But also uh, we feel that uh, uh, we still have the challenge of uh, the lack of uh, in infrastructure, including in the infrastructure of uh, digitalization, visibility, connectivity, and interactions and collaborations, et cetera, et cetera. So actually we are thinking about the to build uh, 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 a new infrastructure for uh, to enable this hybrid community building and enable uh, this uh, the design for the complex social technical uh, system challenges. So uh, again, if in this uh, framework, so from the uh, bottom left, and so it's, uh, how to build uh, how to build uh, a, 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 a station we call station which can enable the connection of uh, the world of a cloud to the, 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 the daily life. And uh, how can we build a database uh, which we can uh, 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 transfer the real world design uh, into a, a, a structured uh, uh, data and, uh, and it, it enables the iteration and enable uh, uh, the, 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 the diffusion of the knowledge. And how can we build more prototype community and a prototype of cities and which will indicate the future of uh, the social innovation and eventually and how to uh, create an infrastructure if how to connect all of these uh, uh, wisdoms, uh, methodologies, knowledges, cases uh, in, 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 into a cloud. So if we look at the, uh, in this picture, hybrid community building in a larger scale social technical transition and uh, uh, from the bottom to the left, of course it's uh, from the micro, uh, meso and the macro, but also it's from the real world to the cloud. 
So we can we can see that the, 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 the new infrastructure I mentioned, the cloud, the database, the staging, and the proto prototype. And uh, it create a kind of uh, interaction uh, uh, among these uh, three layers. And uh, uh, eventually, and how to make the whole system uh, work. And actually, we are proposing a, a, a larger language model for social innovation. So uh, at this moment in Shanghai, and we are implementing uh, this systemic uh, thinking in two projects. One is a uh, project. One is a. Uh, uh, the Circle Tongji Economic District, which means that the uh, uh, surrounding Tongji University, the 2.6 square kilometers area. And uh, uh, we have the, uh, we concentrated nowadays more than 2,000 uh, larger, small, and middle creative industries uh, companies. Actually, the totally uh, uh, annual uh, outcome of this area is about uh, uh, six. 60 billion, 60 billion OMB, about uh, uh, 10 billion uh, US dollar per year. Last year, actually, that was last year. But uh, this area, I mean, it's a combination of the university and the community. And how can we uh, create a kind of a, a new uh, developer model and uh, the new energy for the next phase? Actually, uh, we believe that the, 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 the sustain X. Uh, methods can really contribute a lot. And the second project we are now working is uh, the formal uh, World Expo area. So this, actually, this is the center of the World Expo 2010 and become a super city center now. And uh, now we are thinking about, actually Shanghai is now, uh, according to the master plan, and the Shanghai want to build a central innovation center area in the super city center. So uh, now we believe that the key is a community building and how can we uh, 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 build an uh, innovative community in the city of the center with a young, energetic, innovative, and uh, uh, they could totally redefine uh, the uh, traditional infrastructure-based uh, urbanization. So I think that the, the people is a center, community is a center. So we, we are also uh, now uh, adapt the uh, sustain X approach in, in this area. Um, today, uh, after my talk, uh, we're going to have a couple of projects. Actually, they are working in uh, the different areas, uh, including Professor uh, Liu Yang. We are working on uh, how uh, enhancing knowledge driven insights by industry scope GPT. And then um, uh, Rail will uh, introduce his project, uh, 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 Pro Social Urban Development Project. And then, I mean, Dr. Shen Tao will. Uh, prof uh, 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 introduce a project as a uh, spatial intelligence research for adaptive complex community scenario. Actually, his main contribution is how to transfer the uh, off uh, line, right? So basically, it's a uh, so, 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 so the physical uh, uh, design, uh, the design in the physical world, into uh, to become a a a, a data, by right? the can be a, a, a transfer to be a part of the database. And the Aggie will uh, introduce uh, uh, intentional community building uh, from uh, the local to uh, global and. Uh, 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 Professor uh, Wang Meng will introduce a uh, kind of a multi-module uh, multi -module design, larger language model. Actually, this is a project that we are uh, working uh, with uh, uh, Tencent. And uh, 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 Liu Chang will introduce the uh, project about the, uh, actually the station. We talk about the station. How can we create a, 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 a community-based station which can enable the uh, interaction among different stakeholders and also can enable uh, the connection, connectivity, dialogue, interaction between the uh, local uh, offline community to uh, a, a creative cloud. And uh, last uh, but not least, uh, Yamo and uh, uh, Kang Yi will introduce a project which is a, a community human and AI robots interaction. And this is a project how AI and the machine can learn uh, the creativity from human being. And then, I mean, they can uh, 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 also reproduce the creativity. I think that this is a very beginning, uh, how to learn drawing. And later, uh, we also think that the uh, intelligent aging that can uh, take a lot of responsibility on uh, much more complicated, complex uh, design and creative works. 
And so all of these projects actually is uh, uh, developed under this uh, uh, the framework I presented before. So I stop here and uh, I hope that uh, uh, the rest of the uh, team can present their project one by one. Thank you very much. Wonderful, thank you so much, Professor Lowe. We appreciate that. And I understand too, that if the methodology is published in the Shiji publication, we can share that with you all once again as well so that you can reference it. Okay, I will pass to Leon for the first presentation for Leon and Sichi for project one, enhancing knowledge driven insights via industry scope GPT. And I'll be timing you all Shanghai team. Unfortunately, we're gonna go really quick. So you'll hear a little buzzer when you're about five minutes in. Okay, pass to Leon. Okay, okay, thank you, Maggie. Uh, hi, hi to all of you. Um, I can't, uh, Luis, Marcus, uh, all of uh, the MIT folks, I'm so happy to see you all. Um, and uh, first of all, thank you for giving us this opportunity to present our work. And uh, uh, thanks Professor Lowe for the great introduction and big thanks to to, to Maggie for setting this up. Um, Dr. Sichi and I are going to present a project called uh, Decoding Urban Industrial Complexity, Enhancing Knowledge-Driven Insight via Industry uh, Scope GPT. Um, this project, uh, or we call it a prototype, is located in the, in the, in the living sustainability uh, quadrant of uh, Professor Lowe's research landscape. Um, we all know that um, industry parks are crucial for urban economic growth, blending uh, technology with urban life to, to foster innovation. Yes, sir. How, uh, however, their uh, uh, development often faces challenges due to in, imbalances between uh, industry need and urban services requiring care for strategic uh, planning and operation. Today, um, um, Suchi and I are going to uh, introduce an uh, industry scope KG, uh, groundbreaking multimodal, multi-level, large scale industrial park knowledge graph and the industrial scope GPT framework. Um, industry scope uh, KG utilize a vast data set, including corporate, social economic and the geospatial information to capture the, the complex relationship and the semantic of uh, industrial park, enabling comprehensive analysis and planning. Well, the, the industry scope GPT framework enhanced the decision-making capability by um, integrating large language model with uh, Monte Carlo tree search. And this uh, combination, although for dynamic and adaptable response to the diverse needs of industry park planning and operation tact. Um, uh, uh, I want to emphasize that we hope to answer the following questions of users in real time, accurately and scientifically. Like uh, if I want to um, open a, like a kindergarten in the, in the Zhangjiang High Tech Park in Shanghai, can you recommend a, a suitable address? Or question like, I want to start a an artificial intelligence company. Could you recommend some suitable industry park in Shanghai? Uh, et cetera, questions like uh, this from our users. Then um, uh, I'm going to uh, hand over to Dr. Su Qi to present the detail of this project. Su Qi, the floor is yours. You mute. I don't hear anything yet. Oh, I see oh. you checking here, Aria Suchi. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So uh, my name is Wang Suchi and I'm a PhD student at Chongqing University and the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. And I'm very glad to be here to share our research outcomes in which we attempt to uh, integrate the large language model into the planning and operation of the industrial parks that we call the IPPO 
and we know that the emergence of the LM presents uh, opportunity, but also the issues. And for instance, if a user uh, query about opening a kindergarten in Zhangjiang, uh, as Professor Liu mentioned before, and due to the missing specific data, LM might only generate the general considerations. It could even produce a non-existent address. Moreover, for the brand location recommendation, like deciding to open the 7-Eleven, uh, may not check the vicinity for the uh, company stores because it lacks the spatial association analysis capability. Uh, so uh, let's see how we address the challenges in integrating the LM for the IPPO solutions. Uh, first is uh, how to uh, construct a, a comprehensive data site. So we introduced the industry school KG. It's a multi-level large uh, large scale knowledge graph for the industrial parks in Shanghai. And second, uh, adapting the LM for the industrial park knowledge graph was, was such a hurdle. Uh, so the industrial parks uh, knowledge graph have diverse uh, data types needing the near real time geospatial data handling. So our solution Industrial Scoop GPT enables the uh, uh, LMs to dynamically adapt to the knowledge graph database with the RAG and other geospatial tools. And the third refers to the flexibility and interpretability. And we enhance the LM multi step resuming capability through the monocolor tree search and agent to improve this. And uh, we define the industrial school KG as a uh, uh, graph G equals E S Y, and E uh, represents the entity that encompasses uh, elements such as uh, companies, grades, and industrial parks, and the relational triples denote the relationships between the entities, including the uh, company located in industrial park and other connections like the adjacency and similarity. And the attributional triples provide the details on the attributes of the each entity. And the table shows the details of, uh, of the statistic information. And to build the industrial scoop KG, we follow a five-step construction pipeline. And we start with the spatial temporal data collection and feature extraction. And all the features are then specially joined, mapping to the scales of the 100 meter grades and industrial parks. And following this, we construct the uh, relation, relational triples and the attributional triples covering the three dimensions. And finally, we use a new 4G knowledge uh, graph database for the uh, management. And for the methods, we developed the industrial scoop G uh, GPT. It's an LM driven agent that combines a tour interaction uh, with a graph database following the React style. And to optimize the decision making, uh, we use a monocolor tree search. Uh, and I will show how it works with the following example. So uh, our framework in the diagram tackles a typical site inquiry, and then consider that I want to open the Bank of China near Chunxi Road, please recommend a specific address. And then at the row node, the industrial scoop GPT decomposes the query into the uh, first sub-question. It might consider searching for the nearby grades and then concurrently invokes the potential tools like a server searcher or geoencoder to interact with the database and bandwidth map to geolocate the mentioned address to the specific grids. Then our LM will reflect and score the tour execution result to determine if a solution has been found. And the new child nodes are then generated from the feedback it might invoke the rank master to sort the identified grades based on their features, leading to the uh, top five grades. And in the next steps, the uh, monocolor tree picks the best node for further expansion. And the top five grades are then decoded, resulting the uh, five real address for the recommendation for the user. 
And these are tools we design to support a specific task. And we combine this to generate the rezoning chart that adapt to the various tasks. And for our experiment, we test the GPT-4 with various uh, data inputs, uh, such as standalone and the table uh, and the, uh, the table. And the result shows that the GPT-4 uh, perform well with the industrial school KG. We also compare the industrial school GPT with other prompting methods such as uh, uh, CLT and React to pro pro edge performance. And to assess how uh, how uh, can industrial school GPT serve the industrial park functional planning, we also compare with the uh, uh, model like the like JBM and GCN and use the huge numbers for the diversity measurement. And the result on the three cases uh, highlights the industrial scoop GBT's capability. Okay, thank you for your attention. We'll appreciate if you have any discussions about our work. Okay, thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Leon. Thank you, CG. Um, both of their emails were shared in the City Science Network email. So if you want to continue the conversation, please reach out to them. Um, in purpose of time, we will pass right on to Project 2. Project 2 is the Pro-Social Urban Development Project. This is with Ryan, Chance, Charlotte, Brian, Kai, and Leon. Go ahead. Hey, uh, yeah, let me know if you cannot see it well. Uh, Looks good. Yeah, so for this project, it's a uh, uh, lying to the uh, system that we uh, we want to develop the urban environment uh, in a more systematic and in a more pro-social way. Um, uh, we know all the challenges we are facing in large cities, and uh, it, it is uh, very important to find a way, uh, uh, and also the city uh, comes to 90% of population growth, wealth creation, as well as 70% uh, of uh, emission. So we need to focus on developing the city in a way that is more personal and sustainable. But in, uh, in the current uh, development process, we see like uh, developer and authorities will uh, have a proposal and then we will have a public hearing. Uh, which currently has a, a lot of conflict because of the nimbyism and not in my backyard, or because of uh, 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 inequity and the unsatisfied demand of the community. There's a lot of conflict, which uh, is a lose-lose situation. Basically, the developer cannot develop in an uh, efficient way, and also the uh, community doesn't get what they want. So even there's a for social programs like uh, Cambridge, uh, there's twenty percent uh, uh, affordable housing required. It's a uh, uh, out of date and only very small um, amount of uh, uh, community can benefit from that. So how do we change the behavior for both real estate developers and community so that this um, development will be more pro social and sustainable? So uh, here, the idea is to create a system that is more decentralized so that it's not a top-down decision-making, but a rather a uh, bottom-up and a more, uh, uh, it more content to everyone's uh, uh, demand. So um, imagine you have a, a site to develop. Uh, what if uh, we, the community say you can develop two more story that you have more profit, but you need to share the profit, 50% of that into an endowment. Uh, if you build even more, uh, you should share even more. So this way we find a rev uh, like a funding that can uh, fund this pro-social program, such as the amenity that users want or affordable housing or other uh, pro-social program like uh, uh, a job training or low low income sub subsidy. So, uh, to achieve that, uh, we develop an app. Uh, we design an app that the user can put put into their voting rights 
uh, which is derived from how close they are into the project that is going to be developed uh, into this app. And it will be aggregated and it will be on-chain recorded as well for security and transparency. Um, and then the user can go to each project that they have, uh, uh, that they are close enough to. And then in that project, you can more detail distribute your voting rights into, for example, daycare, uh, I need that so I can put all my voting rights to that. So that uh, after that aggregation, um, you can see uh, with the demand uh, listed by everyone involved, uh, what the urban performance will be. Uh, then the developer can choose to fulfill this demand and also get their benefits uh, by building more and earning. Next, uh, okay, so um, the important part of the research is about how this system will actually act in real, in real world. Before we really work with the government and developer to implement this, a good way to, is to simulate. We use agent-based simulation in which the uh, agent profile and their behavior decision making is assisted by a la large language model, and uh, you we uh, we we uh, have an agent type like the developer, the community member, and the government, and also the project itself is the agent because it need to be developed. So uh, the principle is uh, the same as uh, we said: we uh, aggregate demand and then incentivize the developer to fulfill it. So this is how it looks like in the simulation. We uh, have all the uh, job information and then um, through time, you can see how uh, how each development is voted by the surrounding uh, community members and how the demand gap is reduced gradually um, through time. So for example, at the beginning, we have a high demand gap of uh, uh, grocery and then it drops because it's a higher demand, you get higher incentive, it will drop and in the end you have all the uh, demand gap fulfilled. Um, yeah, for validating this simulation, we use real world data comparison as well as uh, check the sensitivity of the data, like changing the beginning uh, initial uh, condition to see how stable is the result. Uh, that's uh, it. Thank you very much. Great job, Ryan. Very, very fast. Great job. Ryan. <laughs> okay, yeah. pass to project three. Project three is spatial intelligence research for adaptive complex community scenarios. This is from Tao Shen. Thank you. So I will share my screen. Looks good. Uh, okay, uh, good morning and good evening, everyone. My name is Tao Shen, and this is my research partner, uh, Yan Yini. And we are here under the guidance of Professor Low. Today, we are excited to share our uh, research on developing spatial intelligence systems that dynamically uh, adapt to changes within community environments, aiming to optimize uh, resources and enhancing quality of life. So our, our project focuses on a big question that changes how we currently think about uh, city development. How can we create smart systems that adjust to uh, changes in communities uh, using, using resources wisely and improve quality of, li of life? To solve this, we use uh, automated data collection, uh, make a digital turns, and use AI GC to turn complex uh, complex interactions between people and their environment into useful information. And this method helps us build smart systems uh, that uh, meet community needs. As we look more into our project, our first question tracks the main technical issue. How can we ensure the precision and the speed of data collection for spatial intelligence systems in dynamically uh, changing community environments? This is important because the success of smart systems 
uh, really heavily on gating process and the timely data. So our folks, our work focuses on creating methods that can quickly adapt to changes in environment while still keeping highly data accuracy, uh, which is key for making decision quickly. So to meet the first change, we have built advanced in, uh, equipment for smartly gathering 3D spatial data. This setup uses top-notch camera and lidar sensors, allowing us to collect and model uh, compact environments quickly and uh, accurately. These videos show how this tech how this technology provides data in real time, crucial for updating our models and making decisions on time. And this ability is very important in places where conditions often change and needs fast response from our system. So building data, uh, so building digital turn models for open community scenarios is a major step for forward in our projects. Uh, this these models are not just simple representations, but uh, richly detailed and uh, uh, interactively respond to changes, including environments like trees, uh, water patterns, and the lighting. Uh, these compact models are key for simulations that predict different environmental uh, impacts and the community re reactions, helping us. Uh, plan and uh, develop the structures that match our goals for sustainability and improving uh, human's life. Uh, then our second research questions expand our focus on how can spatial intelligence systems comprehensively understand and, and interpret complex community environments in real time. These questions pushes us to enhance our system's ability to not only collect the data, but to understand it in ways similar to human thinking, uh, allowing for a more detailed, uh, allowing for more detailed the interactions and the responses to what's happening in the real community. In response to our second question, so we have led the development of advanced machine learning algorithm that can build and break down um, multi-pipe layers of information in our tree color 3D spatial models. And these technologies not only allow our systems to see, but also to understand and interact with different parts of the community, providing a deep level of insight crucial for making smart decisions. Our third, our third uh, question looks into how can spatial intelligence systems achieve uh, decentralized decision making and enhance the interactive capabilities with uh, within complex uh, community environments. These changes, uh, these changes are to design systems that are not only reactive but also proactive in their interactions, capable of independently making decisions to effectively manage a uh, community environment. Uh, to meet these complex needs, we identified several shortcomings in, co in current designs of community interactive robots, such as limited observation range and errors uh, in tracking positions in compact things, sensors. These issues shoots the need for our new approach, which, which includes better perception, uh, ability, and teamwork, essential for the next generation of community management solutions. We propose a new idea of community smart interactive robots that go beyond traditional design limits. These robots move from central to decentralized network, mix data from different area, and advance from basic understanding to detailed things perception. Uh, this full interaction improves how uh, robots interact, uh, making them better for large and uh, compact community projects. Uh, and here, here we showcase the design and uh, development of two very interact interactive robot and uh, demonstrate its ability to uh, climb the stairs in conclusion. Uh, our project shows our vision for the future of urban learning by 
combine our data gathering equipment and new robot designs. We are setting the path for systems that not only adopt, but also smartly uh, interact with their surroundings. We believe this research will set new standards in the field and uh, greatly improve how communities are branded, built, and uh, management. And that is all. Uh, thank you for your attention. Wonderful. Many thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Meng Wang, and uh, I'm excited to introduce our research on the uh, multimodal design large language model and uh, innovative applications. Uh, the first, uh, sorry. The first, uh, let's discuss the motivation behind this research. Uh, you know, we are entering a new area of design and the, the design, the, the area of the ARGC uh, in the field such as the uh, art painting, uh, uh, fashion plus AI, and the uh, such as the dynamic post generation. We can see that the ARGC can uh, create diverse works more efficiently. Uh, indeed, to, to, to some extent, AIGC has already uh, demonstrated the multiple advantages in the design uh, field. But uh, uh, we know that the AIGC models based on the large language models are really uh, remarkable, but they still have many limitations. Uh, uh, overall, we understand that the design tasks such as the sustainability, uh, gaming, and the UI UX require the extensive design knowledge and the practical data. Uh, current the la large language models uh, lack this data and the knowledge during their uh, training phase, uh, leading to the limitations in meeting the real demands of the design task. Uh, on the on the left, you can. Let's see the cover from the New York Times, which used uh, to illust illustrate the uh, industry users. Uh, you can see that the one the uh, user face the real difficulties, and the existing large language models also often fail to understand the their intentions as well, uh, resulting in um, unusable outcomes. Therefore, we we can conclude that the directly applying the large language models to the real design task is not feasible. So we uh, we do a lot of experiments uh, to analyze and explore the uh, specific uh, the limitations of the current large language models. And you can see uh, both the uh, fine tuning of uh, parameter engineering and other uh, techno technical solutions. And, uh, uh, on the lowest uh, uh, level, you can see the, the, the current research focuses on this level, and th this is the simple tool. But uh, uh, as the uh, as, uh, uh, design difficulty increases, you can see that the existing method and the series are still leaking, uh, especially at the uh, community and the city design and the uh, actually uh, almost no research has uh, not yet explored how to uh, adapt the multimodal language model uh, for the design. So uh, based on this, we have defined the uh, vision of the multimodal design language model and the, uh, to, uh, to serve the different uh, levels and uh, aspect of the design tasks from the uh, simple tools to the uh, uh, most difficult of the uh, community and uh, urban design task. So uh, our technical approach can be summarized as follows, extracting um, multimodal data knowledge and uh, uh, selecting a, a powerful base model and using the, uh, the new neural symbolic way and uh, towards the domain specific task and we conduct the innovative applications. So, in summary, the, the, the new multimodal design knowledge uh, will have the design knowledge and uh, will provide new tools. And uh, what you see is what you get, and uh, introduce new way to uh, organize the design task. And uh, it will support the adaptive design scenarios, user friendly uh, interaction method, and uh, new uh, ecosystem construction. And use this. Uh, in this healthy uh, 
secular manner and the multimodal designer large language model will play a fundamental role and uh, it will connecting the researcher, students, AI engineering, designer, and the company and uh, the users. So uh, this project, as, as uh, Professor Lo mentioned, under the concept of the Enter Design Cloud and the multi-model large, large language model will serve the uh, infrastructure. And uh, uh, actually, we uh, have collaborated with Tencent and uh, we uh, proposed the, the framework. And uh, you can see from the low, uh, from the resourcing uh, computing and the, 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 uh, the models and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the research and the commercial. And uh, we have a long plan for this project uh, and uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the future, we will uh, focus on the model and the ecosystem uh, uh, construct. And uh, uh, the ANTIL project is led by the Professor Lowe, and uh, we have a strong research team. Again, and, uh, this, uh, on the base, uh, on the back of, up, we will uh, collaborate with the Tencent. And uh, you can see we will, uh, uh, in co-creating the, uh, the product information and the, 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 the research series. And uh, uh, we welcome interest in partner to join our research. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Wang Meng. Appreciate your presentation. Um, okay, three more presentations for us to get through, believe it or not. So we will um, start with Eggy. This means that it'll run us over our 10 a.m. close. So if you're from the network, I know that you might need to jump off at 10. Um, I can stay Shanghai team, so I will stay with you and I'll continue recording your presentations all the way through and we'll publish those online and email them to the City Science Network as well. So if you can stay past 10, if you have an opening, stay for the additional presentations. And if not, you'll expect um, more information from me, including the recording. Okay, Eggy, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so hi, I'm Eggy. I'm a PhD student in Sustainable Next Lab, and I have just returned to Shanghai after a six month journey as a visiting student with City Science Group in Media Lab. And so I, today I want to share with you is echoing the research part Professor had just shown previously. And it start with the NICE 2035 as a lo local project to various intentional communities, both temporary and long-term and around the world. So from the regional community to intentional community in the future. And there are three mainly um, dimensions of change in the social innovation. One is the um, content product dimension and another is process dimension and empower dimension and how to produce and redistribute public goods and service in a better way is the product dimension and how to transform social relations and facilitate participants for all. Um, it's another a great challenge and also how to enhance social uh, political capacity and access to the um, resources that is better meets human needs and participants' rights. It's also a, a very uh, large challenge in the social innovation system. So some of these challenges present issue and directly where we can make the breakthrough gradually and from the content dimension, we can show in the information in a transparent way. And also we can provide opportunity for uh, people to enhance the knowledge flow and collaboration within this social network. And also how could we empower the passive participants to become an active initiators is also a very key, ten, uh, key points to empower the social innovation. So my project, Social Layer, provides this community with enhanced infrastructure and data analyze dashboards to design, scale, and sustain intentional communities. And we build a community calendar with composable identity system, provides community member with a safe space to share the projects and workshop information. And we built a, um, 
special temporal co co governance tool that enables collaborative governance and management of resource in the communities. And you can immediately create events and put it in the map. And so this kind of intentional communities are also integrated within the context with the regional communities and neighborhood. And uh, as an example, in this part of city in North California, many local residents have also joined the interaction. Some elderly residents have shared us with their experience of other uh, intentional communities from their younger days. And here's an example of how trust is built within this network. You can check my profile in this app and see the integrating social credentials. We call it like badge. I received. You can then find out who sent me those badges and who has received badges for me. This helps you understand others' interests and contributions to the project. If you believe I can assist you with your projects, you can easily trust me and reducing the initial cost of collaboration. So from the case study of NICE and other pop-up city, we discovered that when you identity, identify someone similar to you or close to you, who is creating workshop and projects within your community, it will empower you that this, this sense of connection encourage you to become an initiator rather than just a participant or implementer. And so from that, we can now investigating the niche network from the micro level to meso level. And then we are trying to uh, create this a connection between different international uh, intentional communities to invite more people um, and empower them to create their own projects and workshop to uh, have a better distribution of the public goods and service. So Pop-Up City, like Burning Man or Zuzaro is a great experiment and to leverage this kind of collective intelligence of leaders across different fields to, to explore and enhance the sustainable, innovative, decentralized so society model. And it is an emerging landscape of global hybrid community network. So you can see there are many different kinds of uh, great in experiments happening on site and people will connect to each other um, in person. The policy network uh, we are involving has developed uh, a new economic system and is enforcing an emerging decentralized governance mechanism. And these intentional communities from Bolton indeed push forward some policy making process. Some of these temporal trials become a long term experiments, and some new zoning policy were provided by local governments. So we have already been adopted by many different uh, pop-up city network and intentional community network. And moving forward, we're trying to build more uh, between communities collaborative. And me and Kai provided the um, graph REG and large language model together to simulate how different facilitation methods will affect community dynamics and public space development. And this model can use differently uh, based on different kind of relational data as the embedding resource, including the profile and workshop info, and also like social credential or trust data in social layer. And we built a demo uh, with researcher in uh, Media Lab, Kai and Luis, and we trying to uh, build more module to enhance the different kind of data and to put this different data into a new resources to this algorithm. And thank you. Thank you, Aggie. Thank you so much. Okay, two more, everybody. Uh, first is Chang presenting Power to the People. And finally, a community human and AI robots interaction from Nyarmo and Kanji. So first, Chang, go ahead. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm Chang, also from the Sustain X, and my topic's uh, Power to People. Uh, we just started this project with a collaboration with another team at uh, Tongji University and uh, Dell Technologies Company. So it's still in a very initial stage. I will mainly talk about some conceptual ideas. 
I also welcome your feedback and uh, if anyone is interested, you are also welcome to, to contact me to join. Um, so as Lowe, uh, Professor Lowe has introduced, my project is based on the third quadrant in the station part. And we want to discuss about how could different stakeholders interact with the uh, community resources with the participatory intervention. So I start with the code uh, to illustrate the current state of the participation in many communities. It says that everyone um, participate, but only a small group of people could profit. So this code appears widely in works related to participation and uh, it uh, um, captures the cycles of enthusiasms of participation methods as remedy for many uh, problems, but ending with the sense of disappointment and its metrical power dynamics. Um, this actually happens a lot, especially in the community scope. Uh, in China, the community public meetings have developed rapidly in recent five years. Uh, for professionals, the public meeting is to introduce a, a project or an issue or a uh, common decision to a community. As for residents, it provides them to voice their concerns and ideas. And for community managers, it could help to explore strategies for the daily um, management. So we have done some field trip in Shanghai and we found that from the residents' view, the willingness to participate is pretty low. And uh, from both residents and professionals view, it's hard to communicate efficiently. And from the manager's view, it takes very long time to make decision on million trivial things. And many times it turns to be like wrong. Um, so what we wanna do, we found that in current stage with the AI developing, the participatory approach, especially in the community context is often absent. Um, so we wanna transform some features of the traditional uh, process into more effective way with the AI empowerment. On the one hand, we uh, plan to establish a participation platform with multi-model based technology to encourage res residents to join. And on the other hand, we will build a platform to I maintain the daily community management and uh, use the intelligent Q&A services to collect a kind of like a course and the question database of the community issues. I will introduce more in the following features. So according to a typical a community public meeting process in Shanghai. They will begin with the uh, topic selection. And as I mentioned, through the database, um, it's easy to filter keywords and high frequency words to select the topics and the most uh, popular ones. And the recent proposal with a real-time interactive platform um, that is the text or the voice generated graphics is also very helpful. Uh, for example, when a public meetings to discuss the renovation of a park in the community. Uh, residents can propose like, uh, here we would need more trees and there we want building slower. So at the same time, there will be the picture of what they want on the screen with the AI support. So in this way, it can solve the communication barriers uh, between uh, those professionals one and the non-professionals. And it can also provide residents with uh, timely feedback to enhance their, their activation or the enthusiasms. Um, and the second is also based on the previous two platforms. We add the dialects interruptions and uh, the dynamic analysis of uh, uh, the residents' emotions. And uh, uh, because in a metropolis like Shanghai, the community is often populated by people from different regions who are uh, used to speaking in their own dialects, which vary so differently. So it often makes communication difficult and uh, um, less sense of identity. And the third is the um, limited uh, participatory methods to a more accessibility way. And here it includes diverse expression, including like text, image, um, audio, or the voices, etc. And the last is uh, from the reality to uh, virtual real synthesis. So here, what, what I want to say is that with no limitations on the time, 
uh, or the location where the interaction forms. The physical neighborhood is also changing into an online and offline community. Um, this also makes us to like to reflect to the community form in the future. So to sum up, um, our project innovates in two aspects through the AI and the data driven, uh, the participatory approach and the decision making process. Uh, we hope that with the support of those new technologies, we can truly achieve an like inclusive, effective, and uh, responsible community public meeting and give the power to everyone, not only uh, a group of them. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, last but not least, we will pass to Yarmo, and Yarmo is presenting a community human and AI robots interaction. Yeah, I'm not sure if I, uh, if Kan Kanji has said the presentation already, so see, sure. he will present that, and if there's time, I, I can say something. Thank you, thank, and thank you, Kanji. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi everyone, and I will represent this project to uh, introduce this the community, the human, the AI robots interaction. Um, oh, sorry. The, okay. So the beginning of this project is uh, start from the last uh, year of the WDCC. And uh, we both uh, joined uh, one uh, one wall on the both sides. One hand is uh, joined by the Yamo by hands, and the other is uh, joined by the robotics, uh, which is uh, gen uh, generated by the AI with a prompt. Um, and we, as we know, the the stable diffusion is uh, uh, is uh, generated with the by the pixel, but the pixel is is really hard to communicate with the robots. So we have to the to transform the the pixel to the uh, van bank and the information which the robots can read it. And so uh, during this year, we 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 training the uh, we marketing the marked the the people and the object and then the training the roller model in the uh, stable diffusion and uh, trying to build up the the. He uh, Yamo's the database, uh, which on um, uh, is is a, is a based on the, his uh, practice the many uh, the images, and uh, we establish the comprehensive the work uh, workflows for the human and the machine the cooperation, and the public can the generate uh, generate the digital the image which the artist style using the prompts. Then the automatically it covers the into the uh, vancouver's information by the computer and uh, realized by the robots arm that simulate the human the joining actions, um, and uh, we realize the the whole the processing is uh, quite similar the, by the algorithms the the coding which is the uh, which is the 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 work of workflow. Uh, as the right, uh, right, the image is uh, from the uh, either from the comfy UI, the the stable uh, diffusion is quite similar. The the algorithm way is quite similar. Is the uh, parametric design and also control the robots. So we're trying to uh, use the API to bring it together. So this is a kind of the uh, really a simple diagram to explain the which we. They bring the the AI on the robots that the become the in embodies the AIs, and also for the simulation the uh, the past is uh, one of the very good processing to the drawing the image, and uh, so uh, combine the doing loads uh, this diagram. Uh, I think the robots, uh, AI and the robots is uh, connected to the vision and the physicals. And also one action is uh, to simulate the artist, uh, uh, the, the artist works is uh, use a, a drawing or even the drawing with the sketching and become the embodies the AI. Embodies the AI. So the recently we're doing the project in the Huangpu High School and uh, empowering the events and the environments. Invi uh, we invited the 12 stakeholders 
the cook's clean uh, garden and the teacher and the students. And uh, we we talk with them and the data selecting their true story and trying to translate the prompt. And the prompt will be uh, enlarge their imagination. And uh, the robots and with AG, AGV, and AGV is uh, also the car is the automatically took the robots to join the, the to join on the war. So uh, so it will be automatically to uh, fin uh, realizing the people, the public's uh, imagination. And uh, the final uh, also the YAMO is uh, combines the separate the screen into the complete the mural. So this is also another video uh, to uh, showing the our processing. Sorry, this. The each uh, screen is a uh, is a uh, is a date from the students, uh, uh, the keywords, and uh, we combine the keywords that created the new image, and the robots will join it, become the uh, become the one piece of the art. So the I think this uh, project is uh, can be. Uh, can be a good example to talk about the community can be better on release their imagination without without, without being limited by their skills. And uh, the artist, uh, the person cap personal cap uh, capability is uh, represented and the service into the more praise. And thank you. Thank you, Kanji, wonderful. Beautiful work. It's great to see the community engagement. Okay, City Science Network, that's a close for us. Thank you all for joining and for hearing the talks from the lab in Shanghai. If you want to stay online um, and ask some questions, feel free. We will leave the call open. And if not, and if you have to jump off, we won't see you online in August, but we will in September. So expect more information from me.